Hello, it's Sarah, and I'm going to paint you guys. We're going to do a little pumpkin. I know yesterday was Halloween, but I still have my, all my a lot of Halloween projects I still have yet to do. Well, not a lot. I actually did, I did another video. I'll share that. Anyway, but this is a simple pumpkin. There's no floating. I'm going to change it a tiny bit from this one and just leave off this little part, but I'm going to show you what I found. These are patterns that I found on decoart.com and I want to try and, uh, anywho, the other ones I put them away. So you go to DecoArt, which is the name of the, the paint company, Americana, DecoArt, and they have under their menu, you go to um, projects and then decorative painting. And there are several by Deb, and I just did a little cat that I'll share um, as well, but this one is actually on uh, glass, I believe. It looks like it's a plate and like a bowl, um, maybe a candy dish or something. I'm not worried about the supplies. I just took the little pattern and kind of used it on my own. And it even says on here, you can shrink or, you know, let's say it says, um, Anyway, I saw it on here. It just says that you can um, blow up or, or make it your own. So that's what I did. So this little guy, I kind of did the scalloping that was along the top of the, of the thing. And I just don't think it fits. It's, it's too small. And these, if you're, I know you're wondering, these are little tea light holders, I believe, that I have had in my stash forever. So I'm trying to use what I have. But they have other shapes like this at the craft stores. Little, you know, there's a ball that you could use or something to do this project. You could use a paper mache piece. And um, so, or you could just do it one dimensionally. I'm going to do it three dimensionally. And instead of tracing the pattern out, I just sketched it myself onto the pumpkin with a um, chalk pencil. I just kind of made this little clown face here. I did do the moon and the spider and then some stars. So I just spaced them out. I also did this little pattern. Um, it's kind of like a spider web. So this is how I ended up doing it. And like I said, there's no floating. I'm just going to do it with base coating. So I figured that was a qu quick and easy little project we could do together. So let's get started. Um, I have out a few colors that I'm going to use. We're going to do a lot of this. I don't know, I might try and just go in straight with the yellow, but it might take more coats. That's what I'm using for the, um, I'm just grabbing a brush. This is, I think, a rigger. Let's see if I want to use this. This is called Straw, this color. And I just chose it because I like the color. And I want to see if it's going to, I think I undercoated the other one with white first. Oh, this is going to be fine. All right, and I'm just kind of stroking in the shape of the star first. A rigger is kind of a liner brush, but it's a little thicker. This is a uh, number two rigger. So you could use a round brush for this. You could use whatever you feel comfortable with. The only thing about using a brush like this to base coat is you're going to get a lot of... Um, stroke marks because it's thin and so the I won't use it for my bigger pieces but because I want to make these points a little pointy I want to try to get them a little pointy um, I just wanted to use something with a point to it and these are kind of wonky stars too so they're not your tradition not necessarily your traditional little kindergarten stars that they teach you to make they can be fat or thin in different areas. Um, have fun with it. Don't sweat it. It's just a little star. So there are, I have several of those. One, two, three, four, five stars. So see, it's not solid, but I think one more coat. I'm going to switch brushes. I think I just need a number three round. They generally will come to a point and you can get I'm just looking for one of my newer ones to see what what result I get with that. Um, 
I just got a bunch of new brushes and of course I'm looking for my blue one this is the one I got from um, Chris Hoy the one that does all the projects from CD wood and it's a number three round but it's very actually this is a number five a number three is ideal that is what you want to hear it is this is the number this is a number four so I guess I don't have a new number three like I thought I did um, but again I just need to be able to come to a tip a point to get and I'm just gonna do the moon real quick I'm not gonna do everything I'll go off camera and do finish up but I want to see so around you can flatten it out but you can also come up to a point and then when I push down it it gets bigger you see that I'm not gonna come in too much because I always come out of the shot whoops and I stuck my hand in the other one I'm gonna load it again and I'm gonna start at the other end and just pull and because this is dimensional it's a little wonkier to paint on than your traditional flat painting would be but again it's just a cute quick and easy pattern see I'm not getting too too good of a point with this brush and that's that's it that's base coated I'll fix it why won't you come to a point I'll fix it with it with a liner brush and then see I can't stop myself okay good stop and then I'm gonna do his eyes and mouth and I'm just gonna grab this this is a this is a three a three round that's what I needed the whole time and it was on my paper towel I'm gonna take some of this this is um, light ivory I think I chose let's see it's almost empty light buttermilk I just didn't want it white white and I'm just I always add a little bit of water guys just to get that paint moving we're gonna put on his little face his nose is black I was thinking of making it a different color but I'm just gonna go with it and uh, circles will grow on you so start in the middle and just push your way to the outside edge carefully it'll probably take a couple coats as well so I'll go off camera and I'll get these um, opaque so they won't be see-through and we'll move on to the next step the black is where all will where it'll all come to life because we're gonna do a lot of outlining and it's just another way to get the details without using floating you know shading and highlighting we can just use lines and then I'm gonna do the mouth Hopefully I'll be able to get a little bit of a point over here. And I'm just pushing down and letting the brush. Oh boy. Guess, guess what I have? My handy dandy Q-tip. I would be doing such a better job if this was not on camera as well. I think I've been rushing I just my my videos are so long I feel bad and I feel like I have to hurry but I mean you won't get the real-time effect if I don't do it in real time all right I'm going to nope it's a little fatter on one end so I'm just gonna try and even it up over here there we go I like that that's a good shape I'm gonna leave it what else is white nothing else well it's light buttermilk I'm just gonna do the spider's body just give him one coat because I'm gonna do his legs after I do the stars and the moon because I want to make sure they're fully done because his little legs might reach over and go over top of the stars see Oh, my nose itches. 
So I'll go off camera and finish all the base coating. So in other words, all the stars will be completed um, fully yellow so that you can't see through them. And actually, you know what else? His nose has to be done. See how ovals grow on you. So just try and keep it contained. That's a good enough little oval. He's a funny looking spider. See, I can't, I can't be happy with it. I have to try and fix it. There we go. Good enough. I'm leaving that and then I'm going to come over and really try not to overdo this nose. I love painting three-dimensional objects, guys. I have, um, I'll show you my little uh, guy I just did. I did film it. It's just so long. I, I don't know what to tell you about it. I don't know if I'll post it. I mean, it, it's up to you whether you watch it or not, right? I mean, at least I would give you the option if I post it. But if I don't post it, that is the most wonky nose. I, I want it to be shaped like uh, a candy corn. That's my... I personally like to base coat with a flat brush. All right. And through the magic of YouTube, I am going to go away and get all of this, the two stars, the moon, and that star, all base coated and solid, and I will be right back. All right. Everything's opaque. I need to put some little stripe. Oh, I added the blue to his eyes. Little blue dots. They're still drying. I just did that. But we're going to go around and put stripes on all the stars, the moon. That's basically it. It just gives it a little more color. They don't have to be perfect. That's what I'm loving about like these quick and easy projects. It's just get it get it on there you don't have to you know worry about it being perfect or and because this one's uh, not even there's no floating it's just base coating and maybe some line work yes that is what it is it's not maybe and this is the light ivory again or light buttermilk I forget light buttermilk. I'm going to take the lid off. I think I'm, I could do another coat of my um, spider. No, he's fine. And I'm just choosing to do my lines kind of going this way, but you can do your lines whatever way is more comfortable for you. I, li I like to pull towards me when I do lines. It helps me be more um, the pressure and the like that was a dirty q-tip sometimes I when I'm cleaning my desk I just put the q-tips back in the bucket see like that is not perfect you guys I'm gonna come in at all not perfect I could even get mad at myself and want to fix it but I'm not gonna I'm gonna move on I put a couple little ones oops I think there's a little hair. Um, yeah, I put a couple little ones just to fill these spaces up here. Uh, nothing on the front right now. We didn't get very many trick-or-treaters last night. I think 10 at the most. Which is kind of, it's almost average for us too. We live in a development that's kind of um, off by itself. It's not um, very big. And uh, I think just pretty much the kids that live in the development come go around. There, we used to get, um, people used to 
bring their cars and come from time to time too I think we used to have more but uh, with the COVID and stuff I just don't think as many people trick-or-treated to begin with so um, there's like a dark mark there I think it's from underneath but that's it so see we just added a little bit of texture oh I don't even know if I was in the shot boy I'm really zoomed in I'm like focused on what I'm doing let me go back up that's a little too close um all right so now we're gonna do some line work with the black I have some black out and when you do line work you want the paint to be the consistency of ink that's the rule of thumb so I have this has been out for a minute so let's see well, it's still good I just took my brush dipped it in the water and then put that right into the puddle and mixed the water that was on the brush with the paint just to and I just did it again so it's kind of like one-to-one -one, a little bit of paint a little bit of water and it just makes it more flowy right now the first thing I want to do is outline everything let's look at the one I did already um, we're gonna outline everything so I'm gonna outline let me see if my eyes um, I could do one more coat but I don't think I need it the stars the moon um, and his eyes eyeballs and his mouth we're also going to make these little spider webs um, and I chose to do them a little bit differently this time but let's just start um, outlining everything and because this is a dimensional piece it's a little bit more awkward but I like to stay up on the tippiest tip of my brush like this and the paint will just flow right off it just like out of a pen oops that was crooked and I really don't have to be that picky but see it's just easy to get it off um, I have q-tips always guys acrylic paints are wonderful that way they're they're clean up with water and um, if it's wet you can still get it off go ahead and do that if you're really unhappy summer thick summer thin I like it like that that's how I like it um, I'm sure you could use a uh, a pen maybe you could even use a fine point um, Posca paint pen or something but the thing is they splash when I've used them before um, depending on the surface that you're working with they can get stuck on the wood it's just because it's a, a felt it's not a felt tip but it's some type of it's not like bristles that are just going to glide over the surface so just know that and <clears throat> but again it's your piece you can do you're free to do what you like I am just giving you the way I do it and then you can um, maybe you'll like some things I do maybe you'll change some things I do now I'm gonna really make sure this is loaded nice because I want to get this moon kind of in one sh shot you know so I'm gonna start up on the tip of my brush Well, I didn't get it in one shot. It's hard when it's a rounded object. Oh dear, and I slipped. I just like my my finger slipped off the edge. No worries. I'll just try to reposition myself. A little bit more water on my brush just to get it to really glide now I can get my points pointy by using the black I just don't like that I'm gonna try and um, go over this little area right here with some orange and see if I can cover up that uh, there's like a little black mark underneath. I don't know what from. There we go. Keep it moving. I 
and I decided to change the way I did the cobwebs because I just didn't like that little I tried to include the purple because I love purple um, the little purple uh, scallops that are on the top part of the uh, like the cookie jar um, of the pattern packet these these are like purple scallops that she put around the top of the jar and um, it just there's just not enough space for them on this little guy so I chose to leave them off of this one and um, I, I brought the um, cobweb part up a little higher so we'll see how that looks And at a distance, guys, nobody notices this. Like, sometimes I feel like I make the most messy videos for you guys. Like, like my work is just not on point. I mean, I do good work, but like, honestly, when you're making a video, it's not your best work. Just like if you're in a class, you're kind of not, you're rushing or something's going on. You know, you're trying to keep up. Don't beat yourself up. It's the like I get quiet when I'm in the middle of this. Like, see that black? It um, it smudges when when I try to erase it. But yeah, I'm trying to do this and not have it too close to me so my head doesn't get in the shot. And my eyes aren't as good as they used to be. You know what I'm saying? This is gonna get cuter and cuter and cuter because we're about to put his little mouth on so this is called line work and it always makes me happy to do line work because you're kind of getting the details it starts to make things come to life and you can add more or less you could put the pupil to the to the bottom, you could give them eyelashes and eyelid, whatever you want to do. This is just her basic design. And it matches my other characters that I've done lately from her little uh, world of Halloween creatures. So that's why I'm sticking with that. And you're able to get your points pointier when you use a liner. I'm trying to continue that line on this rounded surface is not as easy as you think. I gotta keep picking up my brush. Let's see. And he gets teeth. See the funny looking teeth? It kind of looks like the guy, the clown face from um, Boardwalk Empire. Anyway, that's what it reminds me of. I'm just going to try and go right down the middle. running out of paint. I can't really see my puddle. I don't have a ton. And then I'm going to go give him some teeth. I'm just going to start in the middle and oopsie Oh, come on. Just because it's going to smudge all over. I kind of have to use a, a good side of the um, Q-tip every time. And they get... Uh... So if it's not completely dry, you will pick up what you put down with the acrylics. 
but it's just there's just a little learning curve to it. It's not that big a deal. I like them. I prefer. You know, it got real narrow over here compared to that, but I don't care. I think he looks cute. Then we're gonna. Um, <clears throat> I might as well. I could put my dip dot for. I need fresh black. Um, I was gonna put the dip dot for his eyeball, but you know what? There's a chance I'll stick my fingers in it, so I'm just gonna wait until the end. Next, we're gonna do these little cobwebs, and they're not true cobwebs because I like them to be a little more. Um, I could probably make them look more cobwebby. I don't know. Let's see. I just got a new puddle of paint out. And I'm going to start, because this is like going from the top over a big bump, just gently. And I had put, um, ugh. I did lines with um, a chalk pencil. This one's really narrow, which I kind of like. I don't really want them to be all the same. Like, I just mean it had less room. And let's see. And of course, cobwebs are white, which, you know, I thought of that too, but not, oops, not in this design. It got thick there because of the shape of the, the roundedness, kind of my brush. I'm getting paint all over my hand, see? But we're getting there. If I stay up on the tip, that's when I'll be more successful. As soon as I start laying the brush down, things get thicker. And look, it looks so cool. Now, to make them look cobwebby, um, I could put another one down. I don't want to. I could do it on a couple, but I'm just going to follow the pattern. Let's just keep me, control myself, Sarah. Okay, so you just need to go a little loopy all the way up to the top. I mean, actually, that looks kind of good. We'll see. I'll see. I'm going to try and hold it from this side. It just makes it easier. Like I said, hold it so that you're going to be able to pull. Like I said, I like to pull my lines towards me. And if these are a little thick, thin, that's going to be okay with me too. I kind of do, I'm going to put dip dots. Dude, I don't know. I think I want it to be I'm in the shot. Oh, good, 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 good. And this is it, guys. This one's going to be done in a minute. Got to add our little legs to the spider. I was thinking of putting a spider on the lid because it's kind of bare up there. I think I do want to put a little more, maybe one more here. Doesn't need it. I get carried away. I really do get carried away, you guys. All right, stop. So I'm stopping. And then all she has is these little dots. <clears throat> I'm going to put, let's see, I think I'm going to use a stylus. I think I used um, a, uh, the end of a paintbrush, but I think I'm going to use 
a stylus. I just want to get this paint off. I used a piece of very fine sandpaper. So we're going to go. Now I just need to be careful. I don't want to put my hand in everything. And there's also some stitching around his nose. Let's look at him. There's some stitching around his nose, his eyes, his pupil, and then the very last thing we'll do are these dots. But we need to um, do our little face on our spider and his legs. So I'm going to do that before the dip dots because, of course, I will stick my finger in the dots. So we're going to do his little legs. And I just followed the, the pattern, kind of like made these little jaggly Sort of kind of like that. And I made them go, you know, if they ran into the star, that's okay. And I'm just going to turn it so that I can control my brush. Try to repeat what I did on the other side. Hopefully I'm in the shot. Okay. And I'm not really making sure they zigzag exactly or whatever. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just putting them on there. And he has these little like fur lines around them, see? So I did that on here. I just made little lines. So I'm just going to go around, give him a little bit of fur or whatever it is. Hair. See, this would be really cute too if we um, did shade everything and float and highlight because I could have made, I could have stippled him and made him like look furry and stuff, but that's good enough. And with the light buttermilk, I'm going to put on his eyes. I'm going to use this, like, number one. Just give him a couple of eyes. I could have used dip dots, but these will dry a little faster because they're not as thick. I'm going to go back to my liner and pick up some of that and make his little mouth. And he has little cheeks too. We'll give him little orange cheeks. His mouth is kind of like a little squiggly line. Cute. Oops. That doesn't look cute, Sarah. I don't know why I have this issue. Now I'm having yellow on here. I just wanted it to go evenly like down and then up. Because when it's up on the end, it kind of looks like he's smiling. And then I don't have any orange out, so let me see if I have some orange. What else was I going to do? We have to add his and then dip dot everything. So since, I mean, that's a dip dot, let's see. See the little orange cheeks? So that's it. So I'm going to go with that nice fresh black paint and we're going to start um, where's the puddle there we go so I'm going to make let me just make a dip dot at the bottom of each of the spider webs first well that's not making a very big dot is it okay Trying to make sure I hold it at the bottom of the pumpkin so I don't run into any of these and smudge them all over. So I got that, and then you're going to need one. Oh, God! <laughs> um, we're going to need one at the top. I'm trying to see if this, I thought this puddle was uh, deeper. Putting one here. I'm just going to put a little more black out. I have plenty of black. And then I thought I would put a spider on the lid. I don't know. I'm just going to keep that off for now. I have a nice 
wet puddle. I'm just going to, whoops, try and get the dot towards the outside of the opening. And, see, I don't want to touch it. There are dots in his eyes. I'm going to use the same thing. And I'm going to make them kind of, mm, I'm going to make them towards the bottom. I kind of want to make them bigger, but I, I didn't. And... I think he gets a little, oh, there's some stitching around his nose, and I think we're done. So see, that's the difference when you do something with floating and shading compared to no floating and shading. I'll just put a couple little stitches like that, like not all over, just a few. Of course, I make a fat one. And then the little spider has um, an orange dot for his cheeks. <coughs> I'm going to use this is called, oop, not burnt orange. Where is it? OMG, look at all these colors. Let me go up. Because we're done. We're in the home stretch. But this is all the paints I was using for. Um, my little cat that I'm about to show you. Here it is. No, not tangerine. Not burnt orange. I must have it out on my desk and I just don't see it. Here it is. It was behind my little key cat. All right, this is called bittersweet, I believe. And when you're doing dip dots, it's just nice to have a like really fresh puddle because then you get the cleanest. Um, now I want to be careful. Oh boy, I don't want to touch my dip dots. So I'm going to do two orange little dots on his cheeks. One and two. So cute. I'm going to go, I'm going to get my little tiny and I'm going to try and get a little tiny. Oh, no, 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 no. It has to be black for his little eye. I think, well, I was going to put it in the middle, but I'm putting it down a little. It kind of looks better if it doesn't touch. I'm, I'm going to get it off. I don't know why I'm being so specific. But I'm going to put it in the center, like where, so you can see white all around it. I just think he looks more creepier, creepier like that. And then while I have that orange out, remember I was going to try and cover up this. I think it's the same orange, but like I don't even know. I don't think it's even going to cover it. I don't think so. That is so watery, too. I think I had water on my brush. Kind of want to blot it. And then go back in, because this is straight paint now. There we go. See, this is all this stuff that I do when the camera's off, usually, and I'm taking so much time. But I just wanted to fix that. So let's have a look. See if I didn't put my hand in anything. I think we did it. We done did it. I'm going to put the little cap on it. And I think, oh, I just glued this in with Weld Bond. This is like a little piece of leather. Oops, sorry. I'm going to zoom up again. A little piece of leather. This just happens to be like a gold piece. There's like a brown piece. This is like a copper piece, actually. So I just glued it in the hole because these come, these little lids have a little hole in there. So I just glued it in there. Same way I did this guy. Oh, the last thing I got to do is these little dots. And I think I did them, 
with the butter, the light buttermilk. I mean, they, they would look cute with yellow, too. Maybe I'll do his with yellow. And I'm definitely loving that I left this off of this one, but I still kind of might want to paint a little spider on here because he um, he's all the way in the back. And I could paint a baby one on top. It's even nice, ooh, it's even nice when you can, oops, I hope I didn't get any, when you can put a three-dimensional thing, like I have this little apple that I found. I think I broke off this um, little toothpick in there too, but like to glue an apple on, or if you had like a little bug, or a, you know, anything, a, another dimensional thing, you can add that to it. Oh, and then he has these little kind of stripey lines. I didn't do that. He has three of them on his. Let me see what I want to do for that. Just make sure I don't touch the dip dots. I want to do it for sure. I also want to add a tiny little uh, white highlight to his eyeball. So right here. Above. And she has like other little dots, but I think that's plenty. Um, the other lines are done in black. Mm, I don't see my liner over here, no wonder. So I'm just going to get some black and just pull. I think I'm going to just make little three little eyelashes underneath. How about we do that? Like one, two, three. One, two, it helps when I say it. Um, I'm just looking at the other one to see if there's anything that I'm missing. I just really don't want to stick my fingers in those dip dots. That's the always the, there we go. So let me show you what I did there. So I just gave them three little eyelashes. These are, this one's a little different. See? Uh, I just changed a few little things and I think I am going to put um, the dots on here and then I'm going to varnish it. I think I'll go away and come back when it's all done. I'm going to let it set for a second and I want to show you my little cat. <coughs> so this is a piece that I did from the same... Oh, let me go up, sorry. The same website, the Decorart website, another pattern by um, Deb Antonek. She's from Canada. And it was on a fabric, it was on a fabric pillowcase, pillow cover. I'm just seeing if I can get. I really don't want to. Ooh. Anyway, I glued on these whiskers. I wasn't sure if I was going to love them, but I kind of do. And I'm just trying to get this extra out. And it's working. Um, it'll dry clear anyway. But the idea was to have those little holes there as to represent the little cat's little, his little, I don't know, whisker holes or whatever. But it should dry clear. Um, sorry, I'm like so sidetracked by uh, the extra glue that I don't want there. Anyway, all right, so here he is. I have a little spider hanging here by a, a chain, and that's why I decided to do the dimensional whiskers. But they weren't in the design either. I didn't really change anything on this besides making it. I had Joe cut it out with the Glowforge um, and the little spider too. And then I glued these little blocks to the back. <clears throat> it's wonky, so I might need to weight it down. Actually, it's just when this is wiggling, it's kind of wonky, but it'll stand okay. It's not perfect. Um, I was thinking in the future I could cut it out with little feet and um, maybe make it more balanced and just really think about that before I, because I just, we did this spur of the moment. And then I just glittered him up. So he's another one of the family 
um, by Deb Antonuk. And like I said, this is on the Deco Art um, website. So I have him. My pumpkin is up on the mantle. I have this guy. So see, it's the whole fam. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I'll be back in a minute and just show you the finished piece. All right, so I'll be right back. All right, you guys, I love it. I love that I tweaked it. I gave them little eyebrows. Look what I did to the, to the lid. I put a little tiny spider and some more stars, and I just love it. I think it turned out amazing. I signed the bottom. I, I used my starlight varnish just to give it a little sparkle. And I glued my little leather in there to make the top of the pumpkin. I have more of these pumpkins, so maybe I'll make some more. This one I just varnished with um, matte varnish. I just love the way this one turned out. I don't think the camera does it justice. It's really cute. All right, he's going up on the mantle with my other guys. Put the little spider in the front. I love it. Thanks for watching.